among you touches the pool, puts it in your face, and smells it, and say, hmm, that is good. <laughs> Anyone? Raise the hands. No one. I bet you you forgot that when we were young, we actually do that. We have changed. What changed? Any guesses? We became more aware. <laughs> so if we become more aware, then we're saying children are not aware. Hmm, maybe that's where the misconception came in. Because when I was young, my mom would usually say, wash your hands before you eat. Have you washed your hands? It's actually my grandmother. Have you washed your hands? No, but I want to eat now. I, I don't want to wash my hands, it's clean. But she would say, no, 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 you've got to wash your hands. And before we go to bed, she would say, no, you can't go to bed. First of all, you have to clean yourself, put on your pajama, then go to bed. Are we clear with that? Yes. But I did not really think that the, all these experiences would contribute to my relationship with the pool. Because really, what he's saying is something that is dirty should be cleaned up. And always, the pool is considered dirty according to the televisions I watch. When I was a kid, you know, they have the, all this different ad advertising for perfumes and stuff like that. So I developed a kind of very strange relationship with the pool where, you know, when you're walking and you're all dressed up and you have your hand bag on, I feel good today and suddenly, something. It's kind of soft and sticky. And you sort of look at your shoes and say, oh my god, no! It's going to ruin my whole beauty routine. I have this really expensive perfume, you know? And, and if you smell my shoes, no, and the carpet at work, no, 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 no. They're going to say, oh, don't touch me. Don't come near me. So it's always this to the pool. So what I'm really doing is really what? I'm separating myself from a part of life. I'm judging it. It's just like we judge humans, you know. You're homeless. You smell, you know. So, and we call that living. Is it really living? It's actually separating our la ourselves from a part of life. And behind all this, we can, what's behind all this? Do you know? <laughs> all right, the media, of course. The media is always there to tell you what to think and not to think, and guess what? Because everything boils down to money. Why? Perfume. For perfumes to be bought, you should have a judgment that this is good for you. And what do we use perfume for? To smell good? Why do we want to smell good? Inevitably, our relationship with the pool will rest on our judgment of smell. Because how does the poo smell? <laughs> yeah. All right. So, but are we going to just live judging smell? What is the smell really? Well, let me introduce you to the poo. The poo is actually where microorganisms live that is food to some other organisms. 50% of our, of the energy from the food we eat is still in the poop. So other microorganisms actually feed from them. This is the universal ecosystem. This is the model 
of life's ecosystem that we can integrate in our designs of houses, of how we look at waste. Where do we put our waste? To the ocean. And guess who suffers? Humans. Very clever, aren't they? There are so many experts. And why do we do this? Because we have separated ourselves from parts of ourselves, we actually are just looking, just looking after our own self-interest. So let me introduce you to aligning your expression to what is best for all life, aligning our designs to what is best for the universal ecosystem where plants, animals, and humans, and thesis and poo can have their purpose acknowledged and used to the for the best of all life. And rather than thanking you, I will thank the poo for pointing this out to me. <laughs> <laughs>